Now let's talk about quantum theory of an atom. Towards the end of the 19th century, experiments involving light interacting with atoms and molecules could not be explained fully by classical physics. Therefore, quantum mechanics and relativity were developed to address failures of classical physics in describing the current accepted model of the atom. Light is known as electromagnetic radiation. Much of the behavior of light can be explained by thinking of it as a wave. Light can also be thought of as a stream of particles called photons. And we will discuss both of these terms later on in this chapter. <clears throat> a wave is a periodic repeating disturbance that transfer energy from one place to another. The term electromagnetic, electromagnetic means that the disturbance is due to isolation of charged particles in electric and magnetic fields and exerts a force on any charged particle that is in its way. Visible light, x-rays, and radio waves are all forms of electromagnetic radiation. A wave can be characterized by its wavelength and frequency. The wavelength, given the symbol lambda, is the distance in meters or nanometers typically between any two adjacent points of a wave. So for instance here, we take it at the top of the wave, and if we take it on the next top of the wave, that is a measurement of a wavelength. Say we take a point at the base of the wave, if we take the identical point on the base of the wave on the next wave, then that's a wavelength as well. The frequency, nu, of a wave is the number of wavelengths that pass a fixed point in one second. Typically, we're talking about units of cycles per second, one per second, or second minus one, or the term hertz, okay, H, capital H, small z. The amplitude is the height of the wave. So in this case here, this is the amplitude of the wave, the actual height of the wave. The product of the frequency, which is waves per second, and the wavelength, which is meters per wave, would give you the speed of the wave in meters per second. You can see, if I was to multiply these two together, <clears throat> my waves would cancel, leaving me in meters per second. Electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which is a constant which is a given uh, symbol C, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. In other words, we know that frequency is proportional to 1 over wavelength. That proportionality constant between those two is C, the speed of light, to make those equal. Which gives us the formula Frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So given the frequency of light, its wavelength can be calculated or vice versa. Note, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, meaning the shorter the wavelength, smaller that gets, the more frequent the higher the frequency. Let's look at an example. What is the wavelength of yellow light with a frequency of 5.09 times 10 to the 14th seconds minus 1? Now make sure you realize that seconds minus 1 could have just as well been written as hertz here and you need to know what that means, which is a second minus one cycles of all of, of waves per second. Well, we simply rearrange the equation to solve the for wavelength by multiplying both sides by lambda, getting that to cancel, and dividing both sides by nu to get it on the opposite side. So we're taking our equation that we memorized, 
frequency is equal to speed of light divided by lambda, and then rearranging it, which then gets us the equation that we're going to use. In this case, wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by nu. Next, we plug in the values into the equation and cancel units. So you have lambda is equal to the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by the frequency that was given to us, 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or converting that to seconds minus 1. That, if you do the math, that comes out to 5.89 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, a lot of times, when we talk in wavelengths, we do it in nanometers, etc. So we converted that and made our final answer, which is 589 nanometers. Our seconds cancel. You've got to realize that this second is really 1 over second, so those seconds cancel. Another thing to realize is that to get from meters to nanometers, there's a conversion factor 1 times 10 to the negative 9th meters equals 1 nanometer. So in this case, that's getting rid of the 10 to the minus 7th and moving the decimal over two places will be equivalent to 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Or you can do your dimensional analysis and do your conversion as well. Here's another question. What is the frequency of violet light with a wavelength of 408 nanometers? Simply plug the values into the equation and cancel units. So starting off with our equation, frequency is equal to speed of light divided by lambda, uh, wavelength. We get 3.00 times 10 to the meters per second divided by 408 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Now I got to get units to cancel, so I had to convert my nanometers to meters. I can do that in my problem here or I'll do it ahead of time. Nice conversion factor is if I have nanometers, I know that that's equivalent to just saying time 10 to the negative 9th meters, because that's equivalent 1 time 10 to the negative 9th meters equals 1 nanometer. Get my answer, 7.35 times 10 to the 14th per seconds, and typically we like to use the term uh, hertz, so we go ahead and change that from second minus 1 to hertz. Meters cancel, okay, leaving us with that per second, which is a hertz. Once again, conversion factor to remember, 1 nanometer is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. The range of frequencies of, or wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation is called the electromagnetic spectrum and is related to what we perceive as the color of light. That would be in the visible range. Okay, The visible range is what we see as the colors of light. If we expound that visible range, so that's taking this is all this spectrum is in that visible range. We expounded that. Visible light extends from the violet end of the spectra at about 400 nanometers, which has short wavelengths and high frequencies. So basically, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy and the higher the frequency. Okay, they're inversely proportional. To the red end of the wavelengths at 900 nanometers, okay, which has long wavelengths and low energy and low frequencies. Once again, inversely proportional. Beyond these extremes, electromagnetic radiation is not visible to the human eye. However, we take advantage of those other uh, radiation by using instruments that can detect it. This gives us valuable data in analyzing substances. Homework 57 asks you some questions about the electromagnetic spectrum and doing some calculations. You do not have to memorize this electromagnetic spectrum, but you will have to refer to it to answer some of the questions.